how to fly And so I'm offering this simple phrase To kids from 1 to 92 Although it's been said many times, many ways Merry Christmas to you Toys and goodies on his sleigh And every mother's child is gonna spy See if reindeer really know how to fly And so I'm offering this simple phrase To kids from 1 to 92 Although it's been said many times in many ways Merry Christmas Good morning, everyone in the room and online. We missed you last week for Thanksgiving, but hopefully everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving and enjoyed the time with family and friends and hopefully didn't work too hard and ate some turkey and maybe shopped for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Um, Austin, pull up our calendar. What do we have going on? Yeah, so let's do that. First thing we have this week is Dwight teaching a class on Thursday, session four of the wealth building series, the fourth and final session of the series. Um, Want to chat about that? What's in the fourth session? The fourth session, I think, is the most uh, exciting session. I pull the, the, the information from the first three all together. Um, if you come to the fourth, I think it would be highly valuable. And then if you decide you want to go back to get more information on the on the points that I make, then you can do that because I'll be doing one a month. So I'll start over on in December with session one. So the fourth is basically how to invest, how to tax deferred exchange, how to double your growth rate in your real estate uh, with an understanding of amortization and, and some very basic discussion of write-offs. So um, uh, just as a side note, you know, with this new COVID variant, bonds are happening to be doing very well right now, which means rates are drifting down a little bit. So we're getting a little reprieve that might last through the first quarter. And uh, so that uh, gives you one more reason to think about potentially trying to acquire your first rental house or refinance one or do something else along those lines and to get your clients motivated to to get their house right now, the lowest rates probably in history. So cool. So even if you haven't been to the other sessions in the series, uh, still worth going to this one, then you can catch them on the next round. Uh, but Dwight teaches this so well, and it's all about you building your personal wealth, not, mm -hmm. not business, you personally. So, right. so cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then next week on the 8th, we have something really special. There, it's, it's a where is it we're having a vision board party 
for uh, 2022. So right here in this room, come. That's all you have to do is show up. And if you have anything specific that's in your vision for 2022, maybe bring that like a picture of like a certain place you want to go to or something. But we'll have all the materials. We'll have some snacks and drinks. And it'll just be a fun time for us all to, you know, put out our vision, hang it up in your house, in your office, uh, and be able to look at that throughout the year next year and really have that clear vision of some of the goals you want to achieve and the things you want to do. So that should be really fun. Um, a special thanks to Sydney and Kayla who are helping us plan that. And um, if you do have like old magazines or anything you want to bring in for that, go ahead and bring that in. But otherwise, just show up uh, at three o'clock on December 8th. I think that would work really well with like your business plan that you just finished, right? Yes. Yeah. But what if I didn't finish my business plan? Ooh, you should finish your business plan mm -hmm. and then make your vision board. Mm -hmm. So agree. then you can keep being reminded of your whys, mm -hmm. all your whys mm -hmm. of to help you stay focused, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a special guest speaker that's going to help us. <gasps> yes, Connor Schwab, the famous Connor <laughs> Schwab, who teaches a class for money professionally on how to do a vision board. So he's going to be presenting to the audience, maybe live, maybe virtually, we're, we're still determining uh, on some of the tips and success uh, things for creating a vision board. So that is even yeah. more cool. special. Yeah. yeah, so Connor Connor studied this at a very high level when he, when he got his MBA, and then he fashioned a course called Journey Vitae for those of you that haven't heard. And uh, Journey Vitae has included international attendees that have gone through a seven week module with him. And one of the modules is creating a vision board to help really focus on what your goals are. So it's one thing to write them down. We all can do that. It sounds very simple, but we also know that a lot of them get left in the dust as soon as we start the year. And vision boards are a very, very uh, supportive way of, of, of developing your goals to achieve them. And so he's had a lot of experience in this area. I feel that it, the timing is good. And so he's going to either be here or be online to, to talk about what makes the best vision board and, and creates the highest probability of success to achieve your vision. I love it. Cool. And, you know, we, we talk about our big why a lot at Keller Williams, and I think it's just a good way to help tie us back to that. Mm -hmm. So hope to see a lot of you guys there. Um, and then the next week, just to remind you, our holiday party right here. You won't even recognize it. We'll have a band. We'll have bartenders. We'll have food catered. Wear your holiday attire. You can bring your significant other and it will be fun. So please RSVP just so we have, um, Head count for like food and stuff. Um, there is an Eventbrite link, or you can just tell Sydney and she will register you. So we have quite a few people RSVP'd, so it should be yeah, pretty fun. Final count by the 10th. Okay, so please try to RSVP by uh, the 10th, which is um, the end of next week. So if you can, please. And it's fun to meet everyone's significant other. So bring your significant other. Mm -hmm. What's the dress code? The dress code is anything holiday, holiday <laughs> right? So your fancy holiday party dress, your ugly sweater, your elf outfit, anything holiday goes. <laughs> that anything good? holiday goes. Anything holiday goes. <laughs> 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 all right um new homes let's talk about that so you know how we have the segment of commercial and luxury well Keller Williams is working on creating more segments right so now there's a new home segment and this is a a certification that you can basically get and you pay one time and it's $349 and you do two three hour live sessions. There is an option, I believe, to do them not live, um, but this is the first one that is live. 
And Austin, did you confirm, are those times central? Yeah. I was looking at that right now and I was like, I knew I forgot something. It's, okay. I believe this is central time. So it'd be 8 to 11. Central time. Okay. So it's 8, 8 a.m. our time. And so once you pay that fee one time, you are certified in the new homes program. And then every year annually, you there's no more charge, right? It's not like some of the other uh, programs where you pay the monthly fee or anything like that. Then you can do an annual class to just kind of re-up on whatever's going on in the new homes program. And there's going to be a lot of different benefits of learning how to work with builders, building those relationships. There'll be special events and networking things specifically for new homes. So if you are wanting to build that part of your business, this would be a great opportunity. Um, or if you're just interested in getting any more information, let us know or um, check it out or email that email address, newhomes at kw.com. But I know a couple of people have asked specifically about like breaking into new homes and getting into more relationships with those home builders. And this would be a great way to start that process and, you know, get more certifications and things like that. So. Yeah, and I would, I would add to that. I, I'm going to attend that because um, I've had great success at Keller Williams using the referral network. I remember in 2018, I think, we closed 36,000 in GCI from referrals that came to us through the referral network through the luxury designation. And so um, KW, of course, has the luxury designation. So if you look me up on the international referral network, it says luxury and I have a bio. I'm going to get this. So it also says KW new homes. So now I have a second label that if somebody has a client moving to Portland that is interested in new homes, if I'm one of five or six or seven of us and I'm labeled luxury and I'm labeled new home specialist, then the likelihood of me getting the million dollar referral goes way up. Mm -hmm. And the million dollar referral is the $25,000 commission. So if you think about dollar per hour of learning, this is going to be probably one of the most profitable things you could do for the next two years. And I think everyone here should do it if you want to have a chance of getting, you know, that odd referral that comes in from somebody you don't know, you've never met, and then you close them on a new home. Good stuff. And um, Keller Williams partnered with Legacy International uh, because they wanted to partner with an outside source who had more expertise in this area. So um, it should be a really good training. All right. It's a great idea, idea Dwight. <laughs> That's a stuff. really good idea. Yeah, so you do have it. it. Is, that is <laughs> good. Really good idea. <laughs> Even if the information is not good, just having the designations work. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly well, right. Well, this one, yeah. especially because it's just, a, I mean, it's a one-time thing, you know, and then the... It's six hours. Yeah, you never, you mm -hmm. don't ever have to pay yeah. again to keep it up. And there's probably some good information in there, too. Well, the likelihood is if you get one referral, it's in this market, it's at least an $800,000 house, right? right? I mean, yeah. you mm -hmm. can't really see anything yeah. anymore. Yeah. under 800 mm -hmm. probably closer to a million you can't build it's twenty five thousand dollar commission and you've invested six hours so do the math yep um, money. only takes one and you're going to think that it was the most brilliant strategy you did because it's it's learning and and then you get the additional designation in the referral mm -hmm. network it's four thousand dollars an hour for the first one it, four thousand that is mm -hmm. some talk a little bit more actually yeah hmm. a little more actually. that's worth it um, all right. It's Giving Tuesday, right? We all got our shopping out, maybe. So uh, last year for um, the holidays, we collected a bunch of donations, right, for foster kids and families in need. We collected about a lot of gift cards. So the gift card portion was really successful. And um, how that kind of comes into play is a, a lot of families who are not able to provide Christmas gifts and holiday gifts for their families, um, you, you know, really would like to take that pride in buying a gift for their children, right? There is that part of that that gives them a little bit of pride. So um, gift cards, even like $20 gift cards can be really meaningful to a lot of local families in need uh, to buy their kids Christmas presents and then also Christmas dinners. So um, we've partnered with the local school district um, for families in need and um, you know, we're like right on the edge of like Lake Oswego District and Tiger Tualatin School District here. And in Tiger Tualatin School District, there's about 40% low income 
families. So there is quite a few families in need. And so how it works is they go, they go to the school district if they are in need around the holidays and let them know, um, you know, I'm in need. Uh, we would like, you know, some support. And then that's how the gift cards kind of get distributed for Christmas dinners, for giving gifts. And they were so appreciative of some of the gift cards that we collected last year mm-hmm. um, that we're going to do that drive again. So again, it doesn't have to be a lot, even denominations of like $20 or more. And to anywhere you would get either Christmas dinner items like grocery stores or gifts for kids. And that could be like clothes, um, toys, like Target, Fred Meyer, Walmart, um, Safeway, you know, anything like that. So we'll be collecting those here. Maybe we'll make some receptacle to collect them in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to give them to uh, our deadline will be December 13th so that we can give them over to the school district on the 14th. So um, hopefully we can collect some gift cards for them. So we want people to bring in prepaid gift cards in the amounts that they choose. Yes. So they could go to Fred Myers. Mm -hmm. They could go to Costco. They could go just about every single store and then pick Mm -hmm. an amount and charge a card and bring it here. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And the things that they would be used for would be like to be able to buy stuff for Christmas dinners. And the problem sometimes is when they collect food for holiday dinners is that it's um, all the like canned stuff, which is great. But then sometimes it can't be like the warm stuff. So that's why the gift cards are good for that. And um, then like the pride in being able to buy the, their kids a, a toy of their own choosing. So that's kind of why the gift cards were really a nice touch mm-hmm. last year and they were I mean they were more than grateful and then mm-hmm. as were the foster kids that we filled those stockings for last year um so I think it's just a good time of year to give back and um it's especially gift cards are so easy mm-hmm. you know a $20 gift card to like target mm-hmm. when you're already there is like not even hard to do so mm-hmm. um and that supports our local families too right around our office so um and if anyone else has any other ideas or things that they want to contribute to during this holiday season as our office, you know, let us know. We're always happy to support. So um, should we make sure that because I haven't bought a gift card for a while. Do you have to do they write the amount when you charge the card? Yeah. The, so ten, the attendant does. So we know what they are when they come in. Oh, yeah. You write it on there so that people okay. know if, if, mm-hmm. if the attendant doesn't write it on there. Okay, write yeah. it on there that way so we know what card we're giving out right, right. yes yeah, yeah. Write it on with yeah. A little okay. we'll have yeah. a sharpie at the front desk yeah yeah and you know thank i mean everyone who donated last year thank you yeah. so much i mean amazing you, turnout last you guys year. set a really high precedent yeah right? <laughs> they reached out and said hey are you gonna do that again <laughs> yeah. I hope so. sure yeah. we will so um but thought it was a good day to announce it giving tuesday so yeah. but that's only about um two weeks to collect those so don't procrastinate. Okay. What's next? December birthdays. We have a lot of December birthdays. Um, Brian and I are birthday twins. We know that we found out. So that's kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, and Academy, Josh, are you on? I am. Hello. What is going on in lending? Lots of stuff. So uh, Dwight sort of alluded to it earlier um, in regards to uh, mortgage bonds getting a little bit of a reprieve as a result of this uh, most recent variant. Mortgage bonds love bad news because the stock market usually uh, reacts negatively. So we did get a little bit of a reprieve actually on Black Friday. Mortgage bonds started improving and they've sort of held the line through then, they haven't gotten back up to some of the previous levels um, that we were at, but uh, definitely uh, got a little bit of a reprieve from where um, the trend was heading. So you got some people waiting in the wings. If you've got some people under contract that uh, their lender might be floating them, now's a good time to lock because once it's once it's sort of like Black Friday, once it's gone, it's gone. So um, please encourage folks to um, take advantage of that now um, love hearing about the uh, vision boards um, that are going be doing the business planning workshop that you guys had a while ago i did a business planning workshop with tony's team last week 
um, and that went really well. Um, I've still got that business planning um, sort of uh, uh, template that we have put together that I sent out to her team. I'm happy to send it out to anybody who is interested in it. Again, there's lots of tools out there. Um, ours is uh, simplified and you know can be sort of summed up as almost a brainstorming tool. Um, so please reach out to me if you're interested in, uh, in that. Um, I see you guys have commercial lending on your um, agenda for today. And um, uh, a lot of folks, you know, maybe don't realize it because we don't do a ton of advertising for it, but we do have a commercial arm um, at Academy and um, uh, where we broker to about 40 different uh, investors, banks, insurance companies, so on and so forth to, um, to help find commercial solutions, as well as I've got a great uh, local SBA guy um, that, uh, that I can refer people over to. One of the biggest pieces of news that came out today, however, in the lending world is the official announcement of the 2022 um, conventional conforming loan limits. Just came out, um, they're not at 625. They actually raised them almost $100,000 over last year to oh, six, yeah, to six, 647,200. 647,200 dollars will be the new conforming loan limit starting in January 1, 2022, um, which will, of course, you know, help out a lot of your folks who are, you know, maybe waiting in the wings, uh, wanting to, you know, uh, be approved under a conventional um, program versus going jumbo. Um, so if you've got some folks that were maybe waiting for that and want to uh, start working on their January purchase, you can start underwriting to that now, as long as you close um, after the beginning of the year. You don't have to wait to go under contract until the beginning of the year. Um, there will be more guidance on that later, but uh, uh, because this just came out today, but that's uh, that's great news for uh, folks looking to buy a home. It's a huge leap over the over the previous year, um, but will definitely help improve um, capital for folks that are uh, looking to be competitive in uh, in this market. And that's what I've got for today, unless there's any questions. Uh, about, um, FHA VA limits, what's the latest on that? I haven't seen that yet for FHA. FHA usually follows a little bit of soup for the conforming loan limits, although not as high. So these new conforming loan limits are for every county in Oregon. FHA is a little bit more conservative when it comes out with their limits, they will likely increase them. However, they are a little bit more picky when it comes to county specific. Those of you who do business in Marion County, I'm sure have run into some frustration this last year with the poor FHA loan limit. Hopefully that gets a little bit more right-sided this year, but we don't have any announcement or ETA yet on that. They normally wait for this announcement to come out and then they follow suit generally not too long after that. VA has no real limit right now. We can go zero down up to 1.5 million on a VA loan right now. Um, you know, if you <laughs> if you want to, um, but uh, but there is no official VA limit. Um, it comes down to sort of investor on you know whether or not they are going to impose a limit plus um, the borrowers profile, there are um, built-in sort of checks and balances um, on that, or if a VA person is using um, bonus entitlement versus, you know, their standard entitlement. I won't bore everybody to death right now on that, but, uh, um, uh, but FHA hasn't come out with theirs yet. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good stuff. Yeah, that is good stuff. Hundred thousand over. All right, good jump. I know. I just did quick math on that. So, like at 800, 800 nine thousand is like twenty percent down. That mm -hmm. reach reach that loan limit. I wonder how that's going to affect the pricing of that mm -hmm. that loan niche. It'll cause it go up. It should. It should, shouldn't it? Hmm. Interesting. 
Um, all right. So we have uh, Mark Schultz is on. He has been working with his videographer to do some updates on our green room. And we're going to play a little video and then uh, let Mark chat a little bit about it. And let's take a look at an idea about reaching other realtors, other people, possible buyers, possible sellers. This is something where you get to tell your stories and it's something as simple as a photo booth. So imagine if you could go in and have an idea and be able to record yourself with your laptop, with a microphone and with a camera on a green screen and how easy that would be. Well, it's becoming available I've been working with Mark Scholes at the uh, office and we've come up with this small box in a small space where we've set up a green screen setup with lighting and with a microphone and a camera and we're ready to try to see if we can help some of you folks get your message across. Pretty simple. So how should this all work? Well, let's take a look at what the pieces are to make this happen. We've got some LED lights that are color corrected. We've also got some overhead lights that have been color corrected. We have a little stand where you can set your computer on. We have a microphone and we've got a camera. So that should be all you need. It sounds simple, but it's probably going to take a little practice to come up with how to operate it, first of all. And second of all, how to do your presentation. Many of us are good behind a camera or in front of a camera or speaking or on the phone. But some of us may be a little timid about recording ourselves. And this, with practice, I think will let you know that gaining a little confidence you can probably do this yourself and actually be very successful with it. Once you got an idea of what you're going to say, sit down in front of the system and normally we'll use some sort of a recording device that would probably be on your laptop. And if not, we'll try to find a list of applications that would be easy to use and or you might ask Mark Scholz about it. He's already done it. In fact, coming up, there's going to be an example of kind of first, second, third, and then finally a finished copy of what it could look like given all the factors that come into play, which might include some post-production, but otherwise, if you could do a simple message and be able to send it in a file format to some of your people, some of your coworkers, some of your clients, how would that work? Well, hopefully, well. Let's take a look. Hello, everybody. It's Friday, November 12th, and it's time for your weekly update from Mark at Portland Homes for Cars. Last week, our topic was Zillow. We all heard that Zillow stopped buying homes. Cool, thank you, Austin, and thank you, Mark. And so you can kind of see the example at the end of the final product that Mark was able to create. And Mark, are you on? Yes, I am. I hope you can hear me. I'm down in Newburgh. We mm -hmm. sure can. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, yeah, your videographer Sparky and kind of what the enhancements were that he made to the green room and um, your experience with video. Absolutely. And, and my goal is to keep this simple and short and we can, we'll talk more about this in the future. Essentially, I made a decision a month and a half ago to start embracing video with my practice as, as it, it is becoming a much stronger and much more important communication process. So we took a look at the green room there we have in the office. We had two green walls in the little tiny box room and it, it clearly is deficient. So what we've done is we've actually come in and, and adapted the room. We've actually put up the correct color green. It was not the correct green, it was the paint. It needs to be a different green. And Sparky, who if everybody, if anyone saw the movie series Grimm, he spent six years on Grimm doing all their vehicle videoing. He's been in the video industry for 37 years. He does videos for me for my Portland Cars and Coffee event. I asked him to come in and take a look at our room and say, what do we need to do to take this from a room with two green painted walls to an actual video production studio? And it's still in process. What we've done so far is we've come up with a software package that will fit on both a PC or a Macintosh. And we've come up with a camera and a lapel mic. Now, there's still a lot of customization involved. And so we want to take this to the next level, which is where we actually put an existing computer. So it's, it's just one stop, one click process. But if you, we've all learned how to use Zoom over the last year and a half exceptionally well, or not so well in some cases. 
this is an opportunity to take your video production to the next level, whether you want to record it in a room with a green screen, then you can change the background much like I did with the Zillow background, or you just want to record the raw content and send all the way up to sending it on to someone like Sparky to do a full video professional production of it. We'll have that capability. We should have this capability by the first of the year. We're going to continue working on it now through the month of, of December, but it's, although there've been some, some uh, stumbling blocks along the learning curve, it's actually working really well. Thanks, Mark. We appreciate it. And, you know, we've always had the green room. It just wasn't utilized as much as we would have liked. So that's where, you know, this kind of came from. And just with the, a little bit of revamping, hopefully uh, we'll see a lot more people using it. And I mean, whether you do the full-blown video production like Mark's talking about, or even if you just shoot a video on your phone and swap out the backgrounds, I mean, that's cool too, right? At any level of utilizing video is going to be beneficial to your business. And um, some of you might not even know where the green room is. It's right over there. <laughs> um, but now it has better lighting, different shade of green, you know, so it's, I mean, it's pretty cool. So we appreciate it, Mark. And um, next time you're here at the office, or if you guys are here now, uh, go check it out. We'll start creating some videos and we'll put the content out so people can see what we're doing. But remember, um, having videos associated with your name is magic when it comes to SEO. And if you want people to figure out who you are and what you're doing with all the noise that's coming at them in, in their emails and their texts and everything else they're involved with, this is one way to clearly separate yourself. We should all be putting, pumping out videos about what we're doing, what we're about. And it doesn't have to be business, right? It can be your hobbies, but in fact, probably there's more magic in, mm -hmm. in the hobbies that you do and, and other aspects of your life. Um, but fully rounded production about, your, about how you do things is what uh, is the magnet for your clients. So um, we're trying to step that up in the office. Remember, part of this is we negotiated a package to do the uh, drone videos at super, super affordable prices so that Anytime you have a listing that could benefit from, you know, higher exposure, higher angles, whatever it is, that also is going to just drop. Whether, whether the listing sells in a day or two days, it's the gift that keeps on giving. People keep on finding it a month later, two months later, three months later, a year later. And that's how you get business right now. That's how you're going to separate yourself. I love it. Mm -hmm. Keep making videos. Um, all right. Let's talk about commercial. Um, we have some more commercial agents on in here. That's exciting always. And um, Steve, our managing commercial director, want to come up so everyone can see you? Come Just up. to say hi. <laughs> here, you take my seat. Have you prepared right, your maybe. speech? Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. No, um, so if, if you haven't met Steve in person, um, since it has been a, kind of a wacky year with COVID aftermath, yeah. still COVID, I like to say aftermath, COVID so we can just pretend four. it's over. <laughs> yes. Um, Steve is at our Lake Oswego office, and um, he's been helping us bridge the gap in our residential to commercial, and he has a ton of experience in commercial and um we are going to share some success stories. We are going to kind of go back over the commercial policy uh, between the residential to uh, commercial. We have a lot of questions that we, uh, Kelly gets a lot about, like, what if I want to get into commercial? What if I am a residential agent and I get a commercial deal? How does that work? Um, and it's really exciting because within KW Commercial, we have three new leaders of that division who are completely revamping it and there are so many new things coming um so for our commercial agents on the call um i know there's a call on thursday to go over how some of those changes are going to look and um we're going to do maybe a, a group call for that for you guys just to see uh how that rollout's going to look so um if you're not in commercial stay tuned because of after january a lot of things are going to be new and different in the commercial world um, but Steve, do you want to share a little bit just about your commercial experience and what you're kind of seeing, like 
right now in the Portland area, Marshall? And uh, well, my experience, I've been doing this for almost 12 years. Came here from Chicago, been here since 2017. Um, I think what I'm seeing now, I'm, I'm starting to see a lot of land deals, uh, infill, infill deals, particular to uh, new construction multi-unit. I think, uh, you know, a lot of what was built before the pandemic is pretty much stabilized at this point. <clears throat> so I think in the next two to three years, you're going to see a real need for more housing. I know Portland, I believe, currently lacks about 140,000 apartment units. So it's pretty impossible to build our way out of this, mm -hmm. um, even over 10 years. So I think, you know, on the commercial side, you know, land deals is going to be a big thing. New uh, apartment construction is going to pick up again. Um, that's that's kind of what I'm hearing. Yeah. You know, I see some restaurant deals going on. There's some new retail stuff happening. I mean, the past couple of years was pretty intense. I think commercial got hit pretty hard. So I'm definitely seeing that kind of change now. That's exciting, that exciting right? Man. So exciting. New commercial offerings from PW Commercial. Coming out of this, more exciting things happening. Um, for our residential agents, when you run into a commercial deal, um, I guess first let's talk about the process, right? So the, your first point of contact would be Steve, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're going to email Steve and CC Kelly mm -hmm. and tell Steve the details, yeah. right? We have a, um, a referral form mm -hmm. you can fill out, like if you're ready to send a referral over to a commercial agent, but you might just have like questions about like yeah. uh, you know, a well, deal or a transaction. From a, pol from a policy standpoint, yeah. it, with, our, with regards to KWPP, we consider a commercial transaction anything that is more than four units. So you got a duplex, do you have a client for, that's great, a fourplex, that's great. But if it gets to be more than a fourplex, then we need to refer that over to Steve and Steve will land you with the right agent for that particular transaction. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it's like a restaurant or if it's, um, I don't know, um, you're looking for land to build or to, to park trucks on or something like that, that's probably outside the scope of what you traditionally do in residential. So you want to refer that over to somebody who can handle it more efficiently, who knows what they're doing because, because it's much more complicated than you think it is. Um, and then Steve will refer you the right person and then you'll get a nice referral fee on top of it. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. to do anything. Yeah. And let's talk about that because yeah. you know a lot of times the commercial deals will take quite a bit longer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more considerations mm -hmm. than would be in a residential. Mm -hmm. Like the uh, the inspection processes and the things that you have to look at are much different. The mm -hmm. lending can be much different. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Austin, can you pull up that document, yeah, yeah. please? Mm -hmm. So this is just our basic like commercial policy guideline. Um, and uh, this part, uh, so actually section B there just kind of talks about how um, we all agree to in NAR, the code of ethics of like, we're not gonna do anything that's outside our competencies basically, right? So just think about that. When we're doing <laughs> yes. we're gonna move forward, right? Yeah. So scroll down. Um, and um, anything five units and above, that the reason that is is because the lending changes, right? So that's why that's kind of like the benchmarker there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then that this just kind of helps us uh define the other guidelines, but really that's what that's why when you're talking about like a duplex or a fourplex, like that's why that that five plex really hits the guideline. Um, and then uh, leases, especially, right? Like our residential agents, you guys don't, most leases are written by our, com our commercial agents have attorneys write mm -hmm. those leases. So um, most of our residential agents just aren't equipped to write those mm -hmm. leases unless you're having an attorney write those, but there's so many, there's mm -hmm. so many other complex things yep. about those. So um, keep scrolling down. So, um, when this is, if you have a referral, you're going to send it over to Steve and CC Kelly. Oh, and me. Um, and uh, Steve will help determine who is the best person to assign that to in the commercial world. A lot of commercial brokers just have their specialties, right? Mm -hmm. And so Steve can help kind of filter that to the right uh, person on our commercial team. And um, then you can fill out the commercial referral form, which we'll show you in a sec. Now, 
The next question that follows a lot of our residential agents say, well, how do I join commercial? What if I just want to become a commercial agent? I, you know, I have these investors and they're going to do a lot of commercial deals over the next couple of years or whatever. So if you want to become a commercial agent, um, first up, you just come talk to me. The next step is currently you would complete a series of 10 Mike Lipsy trainings. Now, there's a caveat here because, like I said, everything's changing in the commercial world with KW Commercial, and um, they're replacing the Mike Lipsy trainings with um, Nucleus trainings in January. So this is going to vary a little bit, but basically, um, you're going to have to do a series of training courses so that you know what you're doing. Right, whether it's going to be Mike Lipsy or the Nucleus training series, you're going to have to do a series of trainings mm -hmm. to know what you're doing. Um, if you don't have experience doing commercial before, you're going to have to work with a mentor who's one of our existing commercial agents. Um, and uh, that's right on our when you sign up for KW Commercial, we have to list that, right? That's like part of KW Commercial's guidelines. So, um, we just have to talk to our commercial agents and figure out who that's going to be. Um, and then you just agree to the fees. And again, we don't know what's going to change uh, in the new year if any of those fees change. Um, but that's kind of what's entailed to become a commercial member. So it's not just like, OK, I'll just become a commercial agent to do this deal mm -hmm. because there is a little bit more involved in just knowing yeah. what. And I, I mean, I mentored for over a year Oh, with, yeah. with someone in Chicago. Mm -hmm. you know, basically did a, a 30, 70 split with that person and, and did about 10 deals with him. And then after a year and taking courses, and I had to go through a whole credit accreditation thing and pay different fees. Then, then I was cool to do commercial on my own. Yeah. And like that Mike Lipsy training mm -hmm. course um, is a 10 month training course. Mm -hmm. Right. So just to give you a little bit of like the, the length of time mm -hmm. that it takes to really understand the scope. Mm -hmm. of and then also if you're doing residential, I would recommend like I did keep doing residential while you're swinging into commercial because it can take like a year to close mm -hmm. a commercial deal. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. want, you want to have the revenue yeah. coming in while you're learning, doing the courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada. So I think it's something you should have a passion for too, because yeah. it, you're going to spend a lot of time learning how to do commercial and you want to make sure you have a pipeline of business for it. Yeah, and right. you're going to spend a lot of time on deals or, that may not necessarily pan right. out right. too. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have another, you know, revenue mm -hmm. stream for there. sure. Yeah, but I did want to go over that because we have been getting, you know, it's exciting. We've been getting more uh, residential mm -hmm. agents running into commercial deals, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but just wanted to kind of communicate mm -hmm. the process of the reasons why we typically refer mm -hmm. them, and uh, and a lot of them. A lot of the commercial deals too, it's like who the commercial agents know, right? There's so much like networking and uh -huh. off-market deals that you kind of have to have a lot of those it's connections. A lot of, it is it's a lot of off-market, a lot of knowing developers, private mm -hmm. landowners. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, it takes it takes years mm -hmm. to kind of build that up and get mm -hmm. to know the players. And yeah, it's actually a small group of players here that really do it, so yeah we have a really great group of commercial agents yes we're yeah. like we're as a kw office we're spoiled with great agents we're looking to build it out but we do have fantastic commercial agents yeah yes. pretty much do everything yeah 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 well yeah. and i would just add uh for those of you that are thinking about this uh, potentially getting into commercial one of the things that drives these requirements is the eno carriers the email carriers will not let us in, will not insure you as a residential agent doing commercial transactions without the proper guidelines. And so each year when we apply for our ENO policy for the company, we have to talk about who's doing commercial deals and how, how much they are, what the maximum one is, what the minimum one is. And we have to convince them that we're following these policy guidelines. Otherwise, they won't ensure a transaction, which means if you if you are inexperienced and you decide to sell an office building and then you realize that it's sitting on an underground oil tank and uh, you get sued, you have no insurance. And those usually aren't two or three thousand dollar deals. They're two or three hundred thousand dollar problems plus attorney's fees. So we have to follow this. We don't have a choice. It's uh, it's something that we pledge to follow as part of getting a signing 
um, for an ENO policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then keep scrolling, Austin. This is the commercial referral agreement. So it's already kind of like created for you. You just fill it in what it is. And this is what you can send over to Steve and Kelly and, um, you know, attach to your transaction, but uh, to do that referral and then send it over to our commercial team and set it and forget it. And then we have uh, Cameron, you're up. Okay, up. yep, you're Thank up. Steve. Thank All you, right. Steve, we appreciate yeah. you. <laughs> and then Ryan, are you on? Um, and then uh, Austin, we can take this down, please. Yes, I'm here. Um, so Ryan uh, Purdy is one of our awesome residential agents and Cam is one of our amazing commercial agents. And they just recently had a situation where Ryan um, ran into a deal that he uh, referred over to Cam. So why don't you guys tell that story and uh, Ryan maybe explain a little bit how, like what would have happened if you would have tried to do it? <laughs> yeah, sure. so the, the situation was I had closed a residential deal and just through our conversations also found out that this uh, gentleman also purchased a lot of commercial offices as well too and was con continuing to look for those but didn't necessarily have kind of a commercial partner. Um, so I kind of reached out to Kelly to kind of find out how that whole entire process worked as we kind of just talked through and then uh, partnered up with Cam. Um, to work with this specific gentleman. Um, he actually already had a property in mind of what he wanted to purchase. And so kind of took that one to Cameron and um, now they're under contract under that property right now. Um, and then I've just kind of had an opportunity to piggyback with Cameron in some of those meetings already too, just to learn more from a commercial side and how it differs from residential. Um, and just, yeah, I'm definitely not qualified for the commercial side. So I was really happy to have a partner who already has that experience and was able to kind of uh, take the lead on that, but also willing to kind of show me the ropes on the commercial deal and how it is so different from uh, the residential deal. And that was something that Ryan communicated with me up front right away. He's like, I'm interested in learning more about what you do. And so I said, hey, just come to our initial coffee meeting. So I went and had coffee with this gentleman. Um, he's in the dental world, an investor, and he had his partner who does the construction investment development side. And I was like, Ryan, you wanna come join? And he came and joined for coffee and listened in. And um, would you say that was beneficial, Ryan? Yeah, absolutely. I learned more in that meeting about commercial than I would have known without going through that process. And it actually just intrigued my interest more in learning even more about it. And then we had a, a property on a contract within like four days of that coffee meeting. So it worked out really well. That's so cool. How'd you get it under contract so fast? Well, they had a couple in mind that they were searching for. We're just looking for dental offices around Portland. And that was one that we just submitted an offer right away. And we had a good going in strategy and commercial, as Steve was mentioning, it's very nuanced right now. Certain product types are very hot and certain product types are struggling more. So this one happened to be on the market for a while and it was out in Hillsboro. So it worked well. Oh, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So cool. Nice. Yeah. When is it close? Uh, in Q1 of next year in January. So that'll be a nice little $5,000 check for Ryan uh, in January, assuming that closes on time, which I believe it will. I love that, right? Yeah. So it's worth five grand to like send a referral, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah, Cameron did all the work, so. <laughs> <laughs> and Ryan, maybe you can speak like, you know, so sometimes it seems like, well, how much different could like an office building or dental building be, right, than a house? So maybe... In your meeting, what were some of the things that kind of stood out to you that were like, oh, yeah, I never would have thought of that or like, oh, yeah, that's kind of like something that's different. Well, you know, some of some of it's very similar from an inspection perspective, um, but it's just at a different level uh, and a different volume and size than a residential When residential you're working at just a specific um, unit, but in office, not only are you thinking about it's bigger from an overall size and, and cost perspective, but you're also talking about the tenants and the different lease arrangements that are there and different lending principles. And so just all of those different elements are just something that are more nuanced um, than in the residential space or just different. And so it takes a different type of experience to be able to understand that. And speaking of lending, Josh, is Josh still on the line? I didn't know that you do commercial now. I thought that- I didn't know that either. Josh, are you still there? Do you, you said you had a referral partner 
East. Oh, East. Uh, oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll follow. 30. We'll follow back up on that. Forty. 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 40, 40. Separate. Separate. Oh, okay. Including an SBA. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm going to follow up with him because there are different types of SBA mm -hmm. loans, like 7A, 504. So I'd love to know more. Maybe we can mm -hmm. share that in the next meeting. I was going to ask him more questions about mm -hmm. that. But that directly relates to the conversation um, that we are having with uh, Ryan's client that I'm working with mm -hmm. right now. So they're going through that very conversation about how they want to close that property. They have another existing dental practice location in Hillsboro. So part of the conversation is how they're going to move that, how they're going to close on it. Um, bring in a loan and then make an offer on their existing property as well. So there might be multiple mm -hmm. sides to the equation. Yeah. That so I, I would add, we're at the point in the, in the economic cycle where the SBA needs to salvage all these small businesses. And so um, these SBA loans in the next five years are going to be huge as people try to recover from maybe businesses that they lost or they break off from businesses that closed down or they were laid off and now they're going to go out on their own. And, and that's what the SBA is for. It's a, you know, the federal government guarantees the loan so the lenders don't lose any money, which means you get easier under underwriting standards typically and you get typically, you know, government kinds of rates like VA, FHA. And it's truly an amazing program. It can be an amazing program. And I, firmly believe from what I'm reading that we're going to see much more government involvement in trying to stimulate small businesses. So this is this is another reason to pay attention. This is uh, this is another element of what we're going to try and heighten the awareness around. And man, you have one going right now. Is he still going to do SBA? So that's the other thing is that their SBA works in many scenarios, but it also doesn't. And there are timeline considerations and improvement considerations on the building and so many different factors that all affect that. So I have a client that looked in, at SBA initially and then decided to go conventional. So it really just depends on each individual scenario. And if it's in an opportunity zone, we'll hold other Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, yeah. For those on the phone, Steve just added, if it's in an opportunity zone, that that adds a whole nother component mm -hmm. too. So um, again, engage our commercial agents. I yeah. mean, we have so many yeah. amazing commercial it, agents. It's, yeah, it's just compress. There's so many moving pieces in these commercial deals that if you, if you really aren't specializing in that niche, that you probably don't even know what they are. Mm -hmm. And so you can misrepresent your client and not even know it. It, or, or have experience in that niche. And, I, yeah. and that's the cool part about our commercial branch is that we have with mm -hmm. all our agents, I see I Denise see on, yeah. I see her picture up front, but like the, the experience just within our office, we have so much breadth. It's actually pretty amazing mm -hmm. for the number of agents that we have. And it, you know, even within our office, there are different agents, depending on what the deal is and the specialties, they'll partner up. I've partnered up with a couple. I'm working on a land deal in Portland right now that Steve is, it's off market at the moment. And Steve's bringing in a couple of Chicago developers to look at, you know, trying to figure out different ways to bring up the price per square foot. So lots um, of creative, question, creative ways to do it. Question for you. So in the, in the, in the residential world, you know, we put a deal in the, in the contract and I'm guessing what we close about 95, 97% of the time. How often do you put a deal in the contract and it gets to close? Not because, oh, not because question. you're, it's not because so you're, much, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really hard to predict. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying it's, it's not as totally common. Like the deals will fall apart more often because they're more totally. complicated. I, I guess I'm trying to name, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a point, I guess, is that these deals are complicated. So make sure you well, let someone who knows what they're doing, do it. Attorneys get involved, PSAs get red line, written, closes, pushed out. Maybe it doesn't work out. Maybe the private equity walks away. I mean, there's some things that can happen. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what a fair 50 50 that seem about fair, maybe half deals that you work. Yeah, and it probably depends on everyone's different niche. Like, Denise, what would you say is your percentage? She may not, she may be. I think she involves has involved something else, but it, I think it really depends on what, what you specialize mm -hmm. in, right? And leases yeah. are different. Mm -hmm. um, so, it also depends on the alternatives in the market right now. So to your point earlier, when there are not a lot of alternatives in the market, then you see a lot more land deals and, they, and the investors stay with them because there's nothing else to invest your money in. Exactly. And that's where we are in the cycle. We've had these low interest rates now for a decade and are at the lowest in the decade and there's nothing for anybody to buy. And so that's why you see 
these land deals that Mike Kaufman's putting together with $45,000 referral bonus checks to the agent that, that sent in the lead. It's because the land deals are happening and the, the commitment to them is the highest it's been. When a city like Portland, which is typically, you know, top 10 livability in the country for the last decade, is a hundred and something thousand rental units short, they are going to come in and build rental units. It is going to happen in this world, no matter what. Yeah, and I and I had a call yesterday with three different developers from Chicago that just literally called me out of the blue. They want land. Yeah. And I'm just like, all right. Yep. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and and those deals take a long time. So we're talking about this deal with with Ryan's client right now that's out in Hillsboro that's going to be like a 90 day close um, that would close in January. But uh, then we've got land deals and deals like listings that I have with Mike that we've had listed for like two and a half years. And it's not going to close for another two years, probably maybe 18 months if we're lucky. So they they're definitely long. So you're saying if I'm going to spend $20 million on a piece of property, I'd like to know that I can build whatever I want on it. Yeah, <laughs> and that takes a while, right? Now, what he's saying is if you're going to do commercial, you better be doing something else to make some money. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And Maria made a comment just about leases, which is what I was alluding to earlier. Thank you, Maria. And we're working on a couple different lease deals together as well. That's a perfect example. And she's saying that by the time you're in a lease scenario, you know, it's a little more sh of a sure thing because if you get chosen, right, you've, they've already evaluated who you are as a, as a client and uh, want to move forward with you. I, just to add to that, when I started out commercial, I did mostly leasing when I got into it because I could churn over deals quicker mm -hmm. and it was a little more constant. You know, the bigger development deals are not, you know. Oh, yeah. A few and far. Bang on all of them. Yes. You know, and they take a long time to close. And and working with Portland, the entitlement process is, you know, exactly, you know, <laughs> eight to 12 months because they have a new online system that's kind of a little wacky right now. So, yeah. It, yeah, exactly. I, I would advise if you're getting into commercial, maybe start out with leasing or, or work on these smaller retail It's a very spaces. common. You're going to really turn those deals over quicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think there's a ton of opportunity within commercial for our residential agents to uncover those opportunities and send the referrals over. And um, Ryan, I, you kind of brought it up, but you just found out through a conversation, right? And I think that that happens a lot with our residential clients is that they happen to own a restaurant or want to buy it something commercial right it happens just by having those conversations so um asking those questions and just always be being inquisitive about that commercial mindset and having that in the back of your mind that you have that covered if, if somebody asks oh yeah we do commercial i got i got a guy i got a gal we got we have people that can do that right yeah and that's another thing that might be intimidating for some residential agents is once you have the conversation and you call steve and get connected with one of us or you know it, those conversations are actually easier than you think and all of us are very happy to jump on calls with your clients and talk to them about the process and ask them questions right it's not necessarily your job ryan maybe you could speak to this um to ask all the right questions because initially ryan was texting me all these questions about his client and what they were looking for and I was responding with my answers and a lot of them are not like, there's there's so much gray area in that world without me being able to ask the questions directly and assess that it was probably a difficult, you know, back and forth. And so that's where I was like, hey, just have them come meet us with, for coffee. Four of us will sit down and do that. And then it turned into an hour and a half conversation about specific deals and just generally what the market is doing and what future growth could look like for their business. And you bought the coffee, so there's no out-of-pocket costs. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Ryan, you want to add anything to that? No, he got that covered. <laughs> awesome, you guys. Well, thank you so much for yeah. you guys sharing that story. And thank you for our commercial agents for joining. It's so good to see all of your faces. And mm -hmm. I think that this is an area that there is so much opportunity. And, uh, you know, we have more commercial agents here than any other Keller Williams in Portland by far, right? Some of them don't have any commercial. And probably half of, it, of Washington. Right, yeah. and probably half of Washington too. So, I mean, this is a niche 
And um, John, thanks for joining. I was going to oh, say, man. we have a new agent, John. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, but uh, I think it's just a huge opportunity. And it's going to be exciting to see all the new things that commercial has to offer and just more and more deals that our mm -hmm. residential agents kind of get into. And you can see that just those high dollar referral checks that can be as much as a commission check mm -hmm. easily. So hopefully we will see you all at the upcoming events, starting with Dwight's wealth building class and then all of the fun stuff next week and the following week. Um, but have a great week. And thank you, Chris, our special guest today. And thank you to all our commercial team for joining. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Bye.